Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into OTRAM's YouTube channel. Uh, we've been getting more requests for basic maintenance type stuff on Land Cruisers, so I thought I would start doing some of that. So today we're going to do an oil change on an 80 series. Uh, so let me get this up in the air and we'll get started. So most of the time folks would think that draining the oil is the first step in doing an oil change. The very first step before you drain any fluid is always to make sure that you can open the fill plug and check the dip, pull the dipstick out. Um, there's been several times that we've come across dipsticks melted into the dipstick tube that you can't pull out and then you have no idea of how much oil you've put in. So you just end up guessing until you get a new dipstick. So always make sure that you have a way to fill it before you drain it. Now, I haven't had that happen on a Land Cruiser, but other stuff we have. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and drain it. Just a 14 millimeter wrench. And I have yet to get that to where I don't get it all over my hands. We're always gonna use a new drain plug gasket. So check to make sure the gasket didn't hang out and stay on the drain plug, which it didn't. It's actually stuck up here on the oil pan. So we're gonna pop that guy off real quick. Okay, so we've finished draining. I've got a new Toyota drain plug gasket on my drain plug. Give that a quick wipe just to make sure our steel surface doesn't have any dirt on it. Start that by finger. And then we're gonna torque it to 18 foot pounds and it helps if I put a socket on there first. Let's try that again. Okay, 18 foot-pounds. Just gonna rinse that off with some brake clean. That way, if when I go to check it later, if there's any weeps around it, I'll be able to tell if I'm sealed or not. Let me reposition you up from the top side and we'll do the filter and fill it back up. Hopefully, you can see well enough um, to get down here to the oil filter. And why won't you focus? Come on, focus. I like to use one of these adjustable claw style oil filter wrenches with a swivel and an extension. You can kind of feed it down through here. And then you just reach down in here once it's loose, spin it off. Try to flip it upright as quick as you can because you're gonna pour oil all down the side of the block in the front axle. I'm gonna rinse down the block. And I'm gonna look in there, make sure I haven't left a gasket on that surface. And I've got my new Toyota oil filter. The Toyota oil filters come with the O-ring already greased. So you don't have to worry about lubing it before you put it on. If you're using an aftermarket oil filter, which I don't recommend, as cheap as the factory ones are, uh, you'll have to lube that. You can just, you know, hand tighten that till it's snug. And we're good to go there. And filter's done. And now we can come over to fill it up. Take our fill cap off. And I'm not prepared, I did not bring my funnel over. These are super handy. You can get them cheap on Amazon, like 20 bucks. It's just a Toyota specific oil filter funnel that screws in and makes it much less of a mess. And then we're gonna put eight quarts of 530 in, which this is just four, because it's easier to just do four batches of four, or two batches of four. I also really like our bulk oil dispenser because I don't have to empty a whole bunch of quart jugs into here. And then check our dipstick, wipe it off, put it back in, check it again, 
and when you initial fill it, you'll be just a hair above the full mark. Uh, because once you turn it on and run it, you'll fill the filter back up and it'll put you right on the full mark. And what I normally do is I'll fire it up, let it run for a few minutes, check for leaks underneath, check for leaks at my filter, then you know turn it off, let it sit for a few minutes, and recheck your level again just to make sure you're all good. Um, and that's uh, oil change on a 1FZ in an 80 series. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for tuning in.